Hi, my name's Dan, and in this short video we're going to talk about how to program a ClearFlow AP. So we're looking at the Air 13, which is a dual band ceiling mount access point. So when you unpack the box, you'll find the AP, and also the power injector that comes with it. So simply for programming, we're going to connect the PoE port on the power injector to the WAN port on the AP. Now once they're connected, it takes about a minute or so for the AP to boot and then we're going to program it using its default wireless network. So we don't need to hardwire to it or anything like that, which is really helpful because if you've only got a smartphone or a tablet or something, a device uh, such to program it with, then, uh, then you don't obviously have a hardwire connection. So once it's booted, search your local wireless networks with your device for uh, the default wireless network, which in this case is going to be Air 13, um, but it could be Air 3 or a WAP, depending on what product you're trying to program. So if we have a look in our wireless networks, we'll see the Air 13 network there and we can connect to it. Okay, it's really important not to connect anything to the LAN port um, just yet. That's where eventually we're going to connect it into our host network, either the Ethernet switch that's installed in the building or the router itself. Um, the reason why we're not going to connect anything to it just yet, we're going to do this totally offline, the programming uh, process, is because the, all these products are DHCP enabled, uh, which means that out of the box they are prepared for uh, an IP address to be deployed via a host network. Well, we don't want it to do that because there's an, a default IP address on the back of the unit which we're going to use to program it. So once the, de uh, the device actually is, is booted, we're going to connect to its wireless network, then we're going to um, launch a browser and insert the default IP address into the browser, and that's how we can talk to it. So if we just... Okay, so we're connected to the network, open up the browser, default IP address is 192.168.1.200, and we've hit the login screen. Default password is admin, and we're onto the dashboard. So, quick programming process, straight to the wizard, AP mode, and now we need to decide what to do about our IP address. Now, as I mentioned, they're DHCP out of the box, which means they're ready to be um, deployed an IP address by the host network. Um, so you can leave it in that mode, and to do that, you just leave the IP address exactly as it, is, as it is, don't change it. If you don't need to know what the IP address is, if it's just one AP that you're gonna put onto the network, probably doesn't matter too much, certainly if it's a domestic installation. If you're installing more than one of these, or it's a commercial installation, it is important to set it to a static IP. Um, so you'll need to uh, edit this field and change it to a static IP address. First thing you need to know is what the IP range is of the host network, because IP addresses are made up of four number groups. The first three number groups will need to match the IP range of the host network. The fourth number group needs to be unique to this specific device. So I already know that I'm going to connect to a 192.168.1 IP range um, and then I'm going to select a unique IP address for this um, which I already know I'm going to set it to. I'm going to set it to 201. Um, so check out what the router's IP range is. It might be printed on the router or it may be a case of having to scan the network with something like Thing which is quite a useful free app on iOS or Android um, or there is actually a free um, app um, or a program that you can download for your PC or for your laptop um, which is the advanced IP scanner so that's quite a good device, a uh, good program that you can use. Make sure you know what the IP range is and you know that you're going to set a, a unique IP address so if you know the IP range and you, or better still you can scan the network you can also see all the IP addresses that are being used already and then you can select one that's not already being used or select several depending if you've got more than one device to go in. The subnet mask you probably don't need to change that just governs the number of IP addresses available in the range and we're going to leave this as default because this is the most commonly used IP uh, sorry subnet mask. Click next. The next page is all about the wireless networks. As you'll see, because this is a dual band AP, we've got two networks here, or two sections here, one for the 2.4 gig network, one for the 5.8 gig network. Of course, if you were programming a single band AP, such as the Air 3, you would only have one section here. So the difference between the two networks um, is they transmit simultaneously, obviously different frequencies. Um, the 2.4 gig is a much stronger network, penetrates um, obstacles much better, will generally have much uh, greater range. Um, and the 5.8 gig you tend to get much better speeds from, so you'll get the best out of your broadband speed. So that's why the dual band APs are, are ideal. Um, so, but um, 
then you need to decide what to do. As you'll see, the two networks can be set with different SSIDs and passwords, which is the Wi-Fi name and the security password to get on the Wi-Fi. Now, I think unless there's a specific reason why you would want to have them as separate networks, the, the most commonly uh, used process is to set them to exactly the same, so you'd mirror them the same. So I'll just demonstrate what I mean. The SSID, I'm going to call it Clearflow. And password, I'm just going to put Antiference. Now it's important to make sure that the, uh, any capital letters, any spaces, um, the, the, in fact the overall character count are exactly the same, otherwise you will end up generating two networks. Even a, 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 a space at the end of the word for the password, for example, will change the character count even though you can't see it. So make sure you're careful to, to, to set them to, uh, to the same values if, if the plan is to mirror them. So the country setting, we can see we can set to UK um, or for Europe if we're overseas. Um, there's some channel se uh, selection there for auto or um, it's defaulted to auto in fact, or you can select a manual channel. Um, and then if we look, uh, so just to do the 5.8 gig um, band, so I'm going to set that the same, clear flow and anti-fearance. Okay, so when you're happy, you can just click next and then you're on the uh, final page where we will be able to review uh, what we set. You can just click finish um, and then you'll see the green status bar will indicate uh, that the saving process is uh, being carried out. The first thing that will happen of course is the default wireless network of Air 13 in this particular case will disappear and our new Clearflow network that we've just generated will appear to which we can then connect to and it's at this point that you'll then patch in the LAN port on the power injector into the host network. So that's simply how you would program an AP um, uh, for the Air, uh, the Air 13, in this case, in the Clearflow range. Um, so there are other videos on this range uh, on our YouTube channel, so do check them out. Um, and there's more information on the product specifics on our website, which is www.antiference.co.uk. So thanks for watching.